Polakat, the lake connecting two states, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. Spreading over 600 square kilometers, these brackish waters have been sustaining life for ages. It is October and the arrival of the Northeast Monsoon. Fishing days are here again. Food is everywhere. It is a joyous time for both bird and man. Eighteen kilometers away from Pulakat Wildlife Sanctuary, is a small agricultural village, Nelapattu. For several years, this was a breeding home for thousands of migratory birds. Their annual visit was considered a good omen by the villagers. They honoured them as the birds of heavens. But for unknown reasons, the birds abandoned the village to shift their nesting place to nearby village tank and later to the present Atigunta tank, which today is a famous bird sanctuary. This pelican is back at her home after three years. All these years, she was sailing across the oceans and soaring in the high skies in the company of other pelicans. Now, at the age of three, she is a matured bird. A mysterious natural instinct unknown to man has guided this bird back to her birthplace, Nelapattu. Here, she will choose her mate, build a new home and raise her children. But not all pelicans that are born here return. They disperse all over the country and abroad in search of new breeding grounds. Like her, around 10,000 migratory birds come to the sanctuary every year. Pelicans, open bill stalks, ibis, cormorants, and a few other birds like egrets and paddy birds. Their only mission is to breed and multiply so that their generations will continue forever. For another six months, Nelapattu will transform into an avian world. Every bird is busy in building a new home. Time is very precious. All the surrounding water resources, including Pulakat and other major water bodies, will dry up in another six months. Their children must be fully independent by that time. Nest building is a work of understanding between the male and female birds. The male bird offers a stick to the female of its choice. Acceptance by the female bird strengthens the bond between the two birds. Nelpattu with its surrounding scrub jungle and vast areas of reserve forest has enough potential to provide plant material for all its nesting birds. Usually, during the early hours of the day, the breeding males go around in search of suitable material for their nest. The nest construction differs from species to species. The pelican's nests are heavily cushioned with various grasses and leaves to avoid any injury to newborn naked chicks.
Mating continues throughout the breeding period. Few days after the completion of the nests, the females lay two to three eggs. The cluster size is almost the same in all the species that breed here. Both the parents share equal responsibilities, right from incubation to caring of the fledglings. One of the parent birds always stands guard to prevent attacks from predators. The emergent reeds at the shallow edges of Pulkat provide good protection for the breeding birds. This coot is very busy with her chicks from daybreak. She is on the hunt for food to feed her children. As an expert diver, she can reach the bottom of the lake to pick up tender weeds, seeds and crustaceans. It is very difficult to satisfy all the children. The coots are not the only local migrants. In winter, large flocks migrate to the Indian Peninsula from Central and Western Asia. The brackish waters of Pulkat, with its high potential seafood, attracts thousands of flamingos from different parts of India and from far off countries like Iran. Standing at around three feet tall, walking on their long thin legs, these white colored birds look like stilt walkers moving on the lake surface. Their curved angular beaks are perfectly adapted to filtering microorganisms, shrimp, insect larva and other plankton material from lake waters. This dancing-like movement of their legs helps to churn the muddy lake bed so that the trapped organisms can be filtered out easily. These majestic birds with their graceful walk stand as an unforgettable symbol of Lake Pulkat. The long incubation days are over. Most of the eggs are hatched out. Today, Nelapattu has become a cradle for around 10,000 baby birds. The parent birds bring proper diet from far off places for their tiny chicks. For the first few days, the chicks get regurgitated soup of tiny fishlings, shrimp, insect larva and other organic ooze. They take their share from their parents' gullets. Unlike pelicans, open-bill stalks vomit regurgitated food of small snails, tadpoles and other kinds of insects on the nest floor so that their young ones can pick it up. With its moderate climate, bountiful water and food, Pulkat becomes a perfect winter home for migratory ducks and shorebirds. The migration of any species is an annual seasonal journey from its birthplace to feeding grounds and vice versa. Unlike animals, these birds have the ability to fly thousands of kilometers across continents and oceans to reach their selected places on Earth. Birds like shovelers, teals, garganese and other shorebirds come here from as far as Northern Europe, Siberia and Ladakh to escape the freezing icy temperatures and the scarcity of food there. Even today, man does not have an adequate explanation for migration of the birds. How these little creatures travel thousands of kilometers over continents and oceans to reach their destinations is a great mystery. The mud flats with its various kinds of organisms provide rich nourishment for black-winged stilts, plovers, wood sandpipers, yellow wagtails and other shorebirds.
The black ibis with its long curved beak is an expert crab catcher in the vicinity. The most striking birds of all migrants are painted storks. Usually they stand on the edges of chiels and sandy banks to pick up frogs, small snails and insects. Sometimes large groups gather near culverts and streams wading in shallow running water to catch the fish coming from upstream. Until recently, these birds were nesting on village trees at Edhurupattu, around 20 kilometers from Pulikat. But due to habitat destruction, they have shifted their breeding place to Sri Harikota, one of the islands adjacent to the Bay of Bengal. It's mid-noon, feeding time for pelicans. Every day, the parent pelicans travel for around 70 to 80 kilometers to fish in Pulakat and surrounding water bodies. Now, the chicks are four months old and each one needs about two kilos of fish every day. The parent birds never make a mistake in landing on their own nests. The chicks push their heads deep into the parent's gullet to pull out the fish. Sometimes, this process may last for up to four or five minutes. The diet varies from small fingerlings, tadpoles, and even large fish weighing up to two kilos. Usually, the firstborn chick is always strong enough to dominate over the younger ones. It is not uncommon to find its younger siblings dying of starvation. This is the beginning of natural selection, the survival of the fittest. <laughs> 